Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at placing text on a path in Illustrator and also on a zigzag line. But before we do any of this, let's have a look and see where you can find additional Illustrator training of mine. I have a series of courses at Udemy and in the description below are coupon links for all of those courses. My coupon prices are always at least as good as anything that Udemy can offer and often they're even better. I also have classes at Skillshare and the coupon in the description below includes an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and generally mine is better. Sign up for Skillshare and you'll get access to thousands of classes there including over 200 of mine. So let's swing back to Illustrator and the question was posed by one of my subscribers, Yvette, and she wanted to know how she could place text around this shape here. And I was assuming that she wanted to place it around this zigzag. So we're going to look at that, but also how we would place it around just a circle. So I'm going to recreate this circle because it's an interesting project to actually create that circle in the first place. To start off, I'm using the ellipse tool. So I'm holding the shift key down so that I can get a perfect circle. Now at this stage, I don't want it to have a stroke, but I do want it to have a fill. And so I'm going to apply a blue color to this. And then we're going to add a thicker fill around it. And we do this using the appearance panel and we need a second fill. The second fill has the exact same properties as the first. This is the top one and this is the bottom one. Well, we need to recolor the bottom one. So I'm going to select a different color for it, a sort of gray color. But you can't see it because it's directly behind the green one. So we have to make the gray one a bit thicker. To do that, we'll select this gray fill and choose effect and then path, offset path. I'm turn preview on and I want to offset this by about 80 pixels. So it's nice and thick. So essentially this bluey gray fill is now 80 pixels larger than the green one. So I'm just going to click OK. So that's the beginnings of this shape here. Now let's have a look and see how we would place some text around in this blue area. And the thing to do with that is to create another circle. You're going to need another circle. So I'm going to the ellipse tool. I'm going to start out here to draw my circle. Hold down the shift key. Now it's not perfect. So before I finish drawing it, I'm going to sort of move it into position by holding the space bar. That allows me to move a shape while I'm still drawing it. Then I'll let go of the space bar and I can increase it just a little bit. It's not perfectly centered. That's fine. We can do that in a minute. But I am still holding down the shift key. I am still drawing my circle. When I'm done, I'll let go of the left mouse button and then I'll let go of the shift key. Now this circle has inherited all the characteristics of the shape underneath, which is why it looks like it does. But if I click over here on default fill and stroke, you'll see that we get the default fill and stroke and that is a black stroke and a white fill. Well, we don't want any fill at all, so I'm just going to turn off the fill. And so now we have two circles on top of each other, one of which has this fancy double fill and the other one which has just a black stroke need to center these because I want my text to be centered. So let's go and select a line to selection and I'll just center these, making sure that the second circle, the one that only has a stroke, is centered immediately over the other one. Now I have a piece of text here that I just grabbed. It's the first line from Pride and Prejudice. So I'm just going to grab that. That will save me typing by hand. I'll go over here to the type on a path tool. So we're going to select type on a path. I'm going to click on the path and as I hover over the path, you'll see that I get a sort of eye beam pointer with the little wiggly line through it and I get the word path appearing. That tells me that I've actually located the exact path upon which I'm about to place my text. I'm going to make my text a bit larger and I'll just paste it in with Control or Command V, but you could go ahead and type it. Now, once you've done that, the text is now rolling around that path. If you need to, you can shrink the path. So we'll go back to the 
selection tool and I'm just going to hold the shift key and in this case the alt key it would be option on a Mac and just shrink the path a little bit so the text is nice and centered within the area of the fill on the underlying circle. Now we've got a couple of markers here and you'll probably want to be using the selection tool to find these markers. You've got a marker for the beginning of the text and a marker for the end of the text. It just might be a little bit difficult to find these right now because they're sitting on top of each other. So you want to hover over the markers until you get the up pointing arrow with a small arrow pointing to the left or the right and you just want to find one of these. And until you find it, don't click anything because it's not going anywhere. So let me just zoom in a little bit closer and let me find this. Now you can see the little bar and the arrow pointing to the right. Well, that's the beginning of the text. There's this one for the beginning of the text and this one for the end of the text. And so directly opposite is going to be the one for flipping the text. It can be really tricky to find these. So this one's the flip. So when I drag it, the text flips over and then I can locate it again, just looking for that marker and then flip it. As soon as I pick up the beginning one, I can roll it round and then it's possible to pick up the end one and you can roll that around too. Now if you roll it around too far, the text is just going to be cut off and you'll get this little box that indicates to you that you cut your text off. So I want my text to start back around here. So I'm going to go and pick up this little box and I'm going to move my text. But again, don't touch your left mouse button until you get that exact selection. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. So I want my text to start here and then I want it to end over here. So here is the ending box and I'll drag that around. Now if I want them pretty much even, I'm going to need to adjust this one a little bit as well. So there we have our text around the circle and of course if we want to recolor it, we can select the text and we can choose a different color for it. Now if what you want is not text on a circle but text on a zigzag, let's see how we're going to do that. First of all, let me just go and find my text here. I'm going to hide it and I'm just going to lock it down. So I haven't lost it but it's not visible right now. So let's go back to the default settings. Let's turn off the fill. I want to draw another circle. This is going to become my zigzag. Again, holding the shift key to drag out the circle. Hold the space bar just to move it approximately into place. And I can keep drawing it. Once I've got it looking pretty good, I'll select over both of these shapes and just center everything. Now I need to create this line as a zigzag because until I do that, I won't be able to put my text on it. So to create the zigzag, we'll choose Effect and then Distort and Transform and Zigzag. I'll turn preview on because I want to check my zigzag. Well, I want it to be smooth and I want it to be a little bit bumpier. So this is the height of the zigzag. So the bigger that you make this, the higher the zigzag is. And then ridges per segment is how many little bumps you've got. And four is looking pretty good to me. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll click OK. At the moment I have a stroke and no fill and that was because I wanted to be able to see how the stroke would look relative to the object underneath. But at this stage the next thing to do is to flip these. So we want a fill and we don't want a stroke. Now we can't place our text around this shape here because that shape is non-existent. It's actually a circle. So if we go over to the appearance panel, this is what it is. It's a circle with a fill on it and a zigzag applied to it. So when I turn the zigzag off, it just goes back to being a circle. Well, what we want to do is bake in that zigzag. So with the circle with a zigzag effect applied to it, we'll select object and then expand appearance. Now we have a shape that is this zigzaggy shape. Now we have something upon which we can apply our text on a path. So let's go back to type on a path. Let's again pick up this path and I still have that piece of type on the clipboard so I'm just going to paste it in. And this time the text is following that zigzag path but the same elements are still there. So if we click here, we've still got our start and our stop elements and we still have to pick them up if we want to move anything. 
So I'm going to again try and balance this a little bit around this wiggly line by finding the beginning and end points and then just dragging on them. Now if you want to make it a little bit smaller you can do so just grab hold of the path hold the Alt and the Shift key on a PC to drag it in that would be Option and Shift on a Mac. Just note that whenever you do this the line itself is sacrificed the line disappears and you just get the wiggly text so just be aware that if you really did want the line as well then you're going to have to make yet another shape you're going to have to duplicate that original shape so that you can keep the line as well as then have your type going along the path. So I hope that helps you understand how you can put type on a circular path and also type on a zigzag path in Illustrator. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment to let me know what you think of this video. It's always nice to hear whether this is of value to you. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.